way I normally do a check or a pre-flight is I'll walk around the airplane and I get in the habit of just checking specific things all the way around and I do the same thing every single time and then afterwards I'll pull out my checklist and I'll look at it. Now when you're doing your checklist, especially the first few times without an instructor watching over your shoulders, you should really have it sitting in front of you and hit every, every item one at a time. But what we're going to do today, because I don't have laminated checklist for the pre-flight, is you'll just watch me as we walk around the airplane and we'll check everything and then like I said, we'll pull the book out and we'll hit every, every line item and make sure we didn't forget something. And I'll usually start behind a wing just because that's the habit I've gotten into. So let's come over here. On all of the control surfaces, you need to check the hinges and make sure that they're secured. So right here is where the, one of the hinges, you got another hinge over here. Just make sure that the nuts and bolts are tight. I always give it just kind of a gentle tug up and down to make sure everything seems to be attached properly. And as I'm coming along, anytime I'm walking, I'm always just looking at the surface area and make sure that there aren't any wrinkles or tears in the skin. I've, I've moved the ailerons full up and down. With it down, you can kind of see in the, the actual hinges. Again, looking at the bolts and making sure that everything's attached and secure and tight. There are a couple of weights out on the end of the aileron that move with it. Just make sure that they're attached. That prevents flutter. A trim tab here that we want to make sure that it's not falling off. And I kind of just push down on the wingtips as I walk around to make sure everything's solid and attached properly. The lights, the same thing there. Get down underneath and look at the wing skin all the way across. We're also looking for access panels, which is something like this right here. You've got a metal cutout with some screws. Mostly I'm just looking to make sure that the screws are intact, that they're still there. On the tires, we've got the wheel fairings that we're looking at to make sure that they're attached, that they aren't cracked or broken. Making sure we have good tread on the tire, that there aren't any split marks in it or uh, very obvious bald spots. And then I also look for brake fluid on the ground. If there's a leak in the brake system, you'll, you'll get the brake fluid pooling up underneath. And then we'll come around anywhere there's screws. Just make sure that the screws are all in and tight and secure. Get to the front. It, it's not unheard of for birds to climb inside of the cowling and build themselves a nest. So you just check in there and make sure that all the air can flow the way it's supposed to. Again, looking at all the screws all around. The spinner is going to have screws that we've got to check. I tug on each prop blade, just making sure that it's all the way it should be. Looking at filters to make sure that nothing has, again, birds, bugs, whatever, can get in there and build a little nest or it can just get plugged full of dirt. Same thing on the wheel here as we did on the aileron, or I'm sorry, on the other main gear wheel. Checking the screws. Uh, we'll go ahead and check the oil. And we've been through this before. You've got to turn the prop around a few times before you can check the oil on these. So pull the dipstick out and let it start running. Yeah, more than I like. I hate burning unnecessary calories. There we go. That's the noise we're looking for. And we just want to make sure that the oil is somewhere in this flat area here, which it is. It's getting low, but it's still in an acceptable range. It just means we need to keep our eye on it. And in the next flight or two, it's probably going to need to have a little bit of oil added. While I'm here, um, over time, yeah, you'll it either oil will burn or it get little leaks here and there, and uh, you, you'll add oil every once in a while. It's not, you know, certainly not every flight. If you're adding it on a regular basis, then you've got a problem that needs to be addressed. But as long as I don't have any major oil leaks underneath the airplane or it's not burning fast, then I don't worry about it. So right here is our pitot tube. It's what runs our airspeed indicator. So if it were to be get plugged up here, we would have no more indication of how fast we're going, which is kind of important when we're setting up for landings. So we want to make sure that that's clear. And there's also two static ports on the side that need to be clear. 
What you don't want to do though is rub your hands over any of those because you can actually cause the problem you're trying to avoid. Okay, here's another access panel back here, like the one under the wing. I always kind of tug on the antennas and make sure that they're attached. If anything's going to break, like an antenna or something like that, we want it to happen while we're on the ground. Got antennas underneath here that we can check on as well. Well, I didn't find anything this time. You normally won't on a pre-flight, but I still like to look at them as if somebody had sabotaged my airplane and because you know, it does happen. It's, it's so rare that you'll find something on a pre-flight that it, you can really easily get into a, a mindset of just being complacent like we've talked about before, and that's when bad things start to happen. So when I do a pre-flight, I just assume somebody has broken something and that I don't know about it, and it's my job to find it. All right, I think we're ready to go, unless you have any questions for us, Mike. I'm good. All right, let's get in the plane and go flying. <laughs>